Hey there YouTube! Welcome back to another video. Today I will be showing you my brand new fly tying kit. This video is for anyone that might be wondering what they need and how much it costs to start tying their own flies. I will show you everything you need in order to create your own Alaskan fly patterns. Let's get right into it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me explain quickly. Flies are fishing lures that you use to go fly fishing. They are made out of bird feathers, animal fur, and other assorted natural and synthetic materials. They are designed to mimic natural fish food like insects, small fish, and pretty much anything else that a fish would eat. You can choose to buy pre-tied flies or you can tie your own. First things first, I want to send a shout out to Alaska Fly Fishing Goods in Juneau, Alaska, where I purchased everything in this kit and where I actually purchased my first fly rod and reel almost 20 years ago now. Alaska Fly Fishing Goods does not sponsor my channel and they are not paying me. But, as you all know, I support and review local businesses that I like. Anyways, Alaska Fly Fishing Goods has an amazing website where you can find everything that you are looking for. They have information about Alaskan fish species, where you can learn everything you need to know about the fish that live here. They have regional information, where you can learn about what the fishing is like in different parts of Alaska. They have seasonal information, where you can learn about what you should be fishing for depending on what time of year it is. You can also browse everything that they have for sale at the shop. I mean, look at this shopping section. They have travel information for when you want to book your own fly fishing trip to Alaska. And finally, they have a how-to section that includes all of the information that you could possibly need in order to become a pro fly fisherman yourself. Before we move on, I want to mention one last thing about Alaska Fly Fishing Goods. Brad, the owner of the shop, is a super cool guy. I was out in the bush when I ordered all this gear, and it was only possible because Brad helped me out over the phone. I simply called in, let him know my situation, and then let him know what I wanted to fish for. He put it all together, packaged it up, and took my payment info over the phone. This was very helpful because I have not tied my own flies in over a decade, so I wasn't really sure about everything I would need. But we'll talk more about that in the next video. Anyways, Alaska Fly Fishing Goods has amazing service, and you don't even have to be in Juneau to shop there. Moving on. These are all the materials and all of the equipment that anyone would need in order to to tie a decent amount of both salmon and trout flies for Alaska. You'll also want to get some kind of carrying case in order to keep it all together and organized. This case is a game changer for me, but we'll take a closer look at it later on. Next, the shop put together several pattern kits for me. Each kit includes everything you need in order to tie at least a dozen of each specific pattern. Next up, we have our fly tying tools. These are really important, and you're going to want to spring for at least a mid-range set. The less you have to think about your tools, the faster they become an extension of you. I have had a cheap set of tools before, and they were a pain in the butt. We'll go into more detail about the tools in the next video too, though. Up next, we have a vice pedestal. This thing allows you to use your vice on any flat surface. I ordered this separately because I knew that I would be using it more than the table clamp that came with the vise that I picked. It's pretty important to pick out a decent vise as well. I chose the Peak Rotary vise, and I'm loving it so far. It's light years ahead of the vise that I originally started out with, and its features have already improved my tying and my speed. In my opinion, it's the best bang for your buck, because it's built with quality materials and it's dependable. Again, we will go into more detail in the next video. Now let's take a closer look at one of the pattern kits and talk about what's included. This is the Dalai Lama kit. The Dalai Lama is a famous salmon and trout fly and it works very well. As you can see, these things are not cheap, but the materials are high quality. Let's check it out. First, we have thread. You will use thread to construct every fly that you create, so it's important to have good quality. Next, we have a bunch of different rabbit hair strips. Quality matters for things like this because you don't want the dye to run instantly and you also want your flies to last for more than one day in the water. Next we have hooks, two different kinds for this pattern. You want high quality hooks because hooks are the most important link between you and the fish that you're trying to catch. Next we have some flash. This helps to attract the fish, or so they say. I believe it works, but I think in a lot of ways flash is more designed to attract fishermen, or more accurately, the money in a fisherman's wallet. Moving on. Some heads. These are used to give the fly some weight so that it sinks. You want good quality here because you'll be throwing this fly into a river where it will undoubtedly bump and grind into logs, rocks, and anything else hiding under the water that could cause it damage. And finally, some notes. These provide you with information and tips on tying this fly. This is very handy for people like me that have been out of the game for a long time. You'll also want some quality head cement. Some folks use super glue, but the general consensus is that the Loon brand head cement is the best you can use. Now, we are all set and ready to tie some Dalai Lamas. Moving on. Let's take a closer look at my fish pond tailwater travel case. As you can see here, I had to use a construction knife to modify the space for my vice pedestal. It was too small. 
So I had to take some measurements and cut away some of the foam so that it would fit. It now fits perfectly and it isn't going anywhere. Next, let's take a look at the tool storage flap. As you can see, there is room for all of my tools, and they all fit safely and snugly. This is a big deal for me because before, I had a separate toolkit and it was a pain in the butt to keep track of sometimes. Especially when you've recently moved and you think your tools are in your tying bag, but then they aren't. I've forgotten to pack them a couple times and ended up having to borrow a friend's tools or buying flies from a shop. Next up we have vice storage. This pocket is padded on both sides and has plenty of room for my vice, my bobbin rest assembly, and my table clamp. This is important to me because I used to just carry my vice around in the box that it came in. Again, just one more thing to keep track of. Now let's take a look at how it holds everything else. As you can see, each pocket can hold what I have and a lot more. You can pack this thing with all the materials that you could possibly want. The reason this case is a game changer for me is because of its portability. Everything is together. Like I mentioned before, I used to have multiple bags and boxes, and if you watch any of my videos, you know that I love to keep things simple. I can do that with this thing. Everything is all in one decently sized and packable case. The materials are very high quality, and it feels like it was built to last. Again, the portability is my favorite part. You can carry it like a briefcase, buy the handles that are made out of rope and feel very sturdy, or you can carry it like a messenger bag. It works perfectly with my Peak Design anchors and camera strap. But what doesn't? Anyways, I'm really happy with this purchase and I highly recommend it to anyone shopping for a fly tying travel case. In conclusion, what did all of this stuff cost? Well, it wasn't cheap. Altogether, the grand total was $703.44. That is super expensive. But that price includes several lifetime purchases. I will never have to buy another vice, another set of tools, or another travel case again. I'm really into fly fishing and I know that I will be tying flies for the rest of my life. So for me, that justifies the cost. For other people that are just interested in checking it out, the price can come way down. Just keep in mind that your vice and your tools will be the most expensive items. Just shop around for things that are in your budget, but remember, it's best to get something at least mid-range because even if you don't end up getting into tying flies, you can always sell your stuff and recover some of your investment. Another reason the price was so high is because I purchased locally. No matter how you look at it, things in Alaska are expensive. All things. It basically breaks down like this. A. You can order off the internet and save a few dollars on each item, but depending on where you order from, you may or may not have to pay for shipping, and you may or may not receive what you ordered, both item and quality-wise. Or B. You can buy locally and pay more for each item, but you know exactly what you're getting and you get to take it home that same day. Either way you go, fly fishing and fly tying are expensive hobbies. There's a joke. It goes, how do you know someone is a fly fisherman? Because their wallet is always empty. Tune in to the next video where we will be going into more detail about getting set up and starting to tie. And stay tuned for a lot more fishing content. I will be doing a bunch of Alaska specific how to's as well as gear lists and reviews. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.